And as I said, liver disease is something which I'm very passionate about because um, liver diseases are growing in number like anything. And that's because of these three reasons. I'll come to that uh, in a minute, but I just want to show a graph to you. Um, so this is a graph which shows, it's, an, uh, it's a UK national statistics. Uh, it's, it's actually beyond 2008 also, it's after 2018, the same graph uh, holds good. And as you can see in, in this, all the other diseases, like for example, if you take the UK cancer registry or UK stroke registry or ischemic heart disease um, um, and chest diseases, all of them are actually are going down. In other words, uh, we are able to better control them. Uh, but the only disease which is rising in number exponentially is the liver cancers and the liver related diseases and the death uh, because of the liver related diseases. So certainly this is a specialty where it will definitely keep you in the job for the rest of your rest of your life. Um, so uh, that's the reason why I'm quite excited for, for you for you guys to know about it. Because if you are definitely looking for a long-term job, this is definitely one thing which will definitely keep you, um, you know, happy in your career. And as I said, it, it gives immense satisfaction that you're able to uh, treat the patients, cure the diseases, and they are your lifelong patients as well. So I get regularly patients uh, who got transplanted in different places from different parts of the, um, the world as well, uh, from Middle East, African countries. They send so many lovely messages to, to me saying that, you know, they got a liver, they had a liver transplant and they're doing well. Um, now they're six years, eight years, 10 years down the line and they're doing extremely well. They got back to their routines. In fact, a couple of them are soldiers. They are, they've gone back to their, their, um, their, their profession, uh, heavy, heavy metal job. So, you know, they are going back to their usual life lifestyle and uh, they're managing well. well. So that actually tells us that, you know, this is a, a branch where you get a lot of satisfaction from your, from your patients. Okay, so the, these are three reasons why the uh, liver diseases are, are growing in number. And uh, the first one is the alcohol. Um, obviously, the, as you know, the alcohol-related liver diseases are significantly growing in number throughout the world, uh, and particularly in India as well. And uh, as we're seeing these days, the MACs are getting bigger, what we call a bigger MACs these days, and fatty liver. I think this is probably the biggest elephant of the room is the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease particularly India being the diabetic capital of the world, we are seeing a lot more of these fatty liver diseases which are progressing to form significant liver-related end-stage liver diseases and the viral hepatitis, the hepatitis B and C, which are also growing in number quite significantly. And it is estimated that by 2030, 40, um, these are the biggest reasons for liver transplantation as well. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you some statistics as well. So as I showed in the graph that the, the, the fastest growing cancer and the fastest growing reason for the liver related uh, uh, death is the liver related diseases. And as you can see, it affects the younger population as well. It is not an elderly disease. It is a younger disease and uh, it affects elder, younger patients. And therefore it not just the disease or, or the mortality that it affects, it affects the, uh, the working pattern, the ergonomics of the, of the population of the, of the society and, and that's why it's a disease which certainly should be controlled at a very aggressive and early stages. And as you can see, over the last um, uh, 10 years, there's been a five-fold increase in the rate of cirrhosis in 35 to 33 to 30, 55 year age group. And most importantly, all of them are largely preventable. So this is a disease, these are diseases where you can control this disease. It's in your hands. Um, if you don't, and you see the, the consequences of it. So you can make a bigger impact to the society to the medical specialty and medical fraternity uh, by taking this kind of a specialty where you will definitely have a job, you can uh, have a good career at the same time, it gives a lot of professional satisfaction as well, okay? And uh, another statistic showing that there's been a six-fold increase in the liver-related deaths in the last 30 years. And every year, the liver-related admissions are going up by at least eight to 10% per year. So these are all the statistics telling us that this disease is going to stay, it is getting worse. And we, as a doctors, as a hepatologist and gastroenterologist, we have a lot of things that we can do to help and prevent these from uh, getting worse. So um, not only that, it's uh, you know uh, along with the hepatology and the uh, uh, the outpatient inpatient, 
it's a brilliant mix and the procedure it's a brilliant mixture of the uh, of all the other specialties as well like oncology gi related cancers are very very common as i, I just showed you the picture earlier the graph in, it's a, it's a it's an excellent amalgamation of the oncology infection diseases immunology and hematology so it's a it's a disease it's a it's a specialty where it's a cross linked multidisciplinary specialty and it has got a significant role that it plays in different multi multidisciplinary uh, team as well so um of course as a doctor we do save lives and that's important and we improve the quality of life but not only that as i said this is a disease where it's a vast area uh, if you look at the small bowel itself you know small bowel is almost the the, the if you look uh, the area surface surface area of the small bowel it's almost equal to seven football field area so you can imagine that amount of area if you get diseases how many diseases you going to get and uh, how you know how much of um, uh um the uh, need that we have to deal with these kind of uh, gi diseases okay and that's for the reason why i think um, india has also recognized this and recently there's been a significant increase in number of seats in uh, both dm and the dnb um over the last i think 3 4 years we've seen a significant rise in the numbers of the of the students which were coming out of the of the gastroenterology which in a way is good but i think we also need to understand that uh, rather than getting concentrated in one place we should be looking at spreading out to different parts of the world uh, of india rather um, so that um, we can be of uh, it can be of benefit okay and as i said it is not only the the uh, seeing the liver disease patients um, but also as i said this is one of the very few branches which is in the early stages and still it's growing and the and um, the extent of growth is beyond imagination to be honest because as i said earlier nobody used to imagine doing a appendectomy using an endoscopy similarly we have so many other newer techniques which i'll show you share some pictures with you as well where you can reach the unknown un, un, unreachable areas where it was thought that we cannot reach that area without uh, opening up the stomach or opening up the uh, abdomen so those kind of areas we're able to reach not only that we're able to diagnose the cancers at a very early stages and uh, with newer techniques like for example narrow band imaging chroma endoscopy autofluorescence techniques all these and even the artificial intelligence has been coming up uh, lately so all these techniques were able to pick up these uh, cancers at a very early stage and not only that after you stage a cancer if it is in the early stages certainly in t1 t2 uh, stages we are able to remove the cancer endoscopically itself rather than going for uh, aggressive surgeries so it helped in having a better diagnosis of the cancers early diagnosis of cancer and also in a, an excellent treatments in early stages of these cancers and um, a lot of other uh, techniques like you know for example people who want to lose weight you have endobarotic surgeries um, and um, um, and I'll, i'll show you some slides i think probably it will be uh, more useful if i actually show some pictures to you and then describe all, what what else we've been doing in gastroenterology lately okay now i i say this uh, uh, uh beautiful uh, quotation and this uh, uh, picture because um, we will never say goodbye when we pass on the gift of life that's the beauty of the of of our livers okay so liver transplantation is something uh, a, a, a very close to my heart and something uh, which we can pass on the life to next generations and to the people who are really sick Uh, there's something called living donor transplantation program where um, you have a uh, patient who is um, uh, having cirrhosis of the liver um, and then you have a the family members of same group group blood group or a matched blood group then they can give a part of the liver for example there's a son and a um, father and father has got cirrhosis and they got a son um, son can donate up to 60% of his liver to the father so he'll be left with that 40% of liver so that 40% will again regrow to 100% within 6 to 8 weeks because liver cells regenerate a healthy liver regenerates similarly the 60% liver that the father has got it that will again regrow to 100% within 6 to 8 weeks because it's a healthy liver okay so that's the advantage of having a living donor transplantation where you can actually donate your life to somebody else even as a living person um, we can even donate the, the liver Uh, to another person so that's a beauty that we should not forget that god has given to us that we should pass on the gift of life to another person with liver transplantation okay and the advantage for that is because liver is a segmental organ okay so because-